Welcome to Module 3 of Infernia's Training Sessions. Under the Insert option, you have a tool called Lights. When you select the same, the carousal opens up wherein the different types of lights that are available in the Infernia catalog are shown to you. The different categories of light that are available are ceiling lights, floor lamp, hanging light, table lamp and wall lamp and you can select any of the fixtures that are available in the catalog and install it in your model. Suppose when you select the ceiling light, let's say I am selecting ceiling light 1. So by default it gets aligned to the ceiling. Similarly if I select a floor lamp, it by default snaps to the floor and you can install it on the floor only. If you install any hanging light, Again, it will get added to the ceiling and if you select a wall lamp, then it gets added to the wall automatically. The properties of all these lights are defined such that it gets installed in the relevant areas only. When you select any light, in the design panel, you get the option of position under which you have the option of shifting it and rotating it as well. So suppose if I input a value in side shift, let's say I'm shifting it by 500 mm, then the light shifts to the right positive direction of x axis by 500 mm. And suppose if I input the same value in minus, then it will move to the left side, which is a negative range of x axis. Similarly, if I sh input the value in front shift by 500, then it will shift front by 500 mm. And if I input the value in negative, then it will go back. The other option is elevation, wherein you can specify what at what elevation you want the light to be. By default, since it's a ceiling light, it is attached to the ceiling and the elevation is defined accordingly. However, if you still want to make any changes to that, then let's say I am changing the elevation value to 1900 mm. So, the elevation of that will shift and it will come at 1900 mm. To rotate the light that you have installed, select the light and under positions, you will get an option called rotation. Here you can Rotate the light that you have installed along the X, Y and Z axis. You just have to input the value of the rotation that you want. Let's say I want a 45 degree rotation. Then as you can see along the X axis, this is rotated by 45 degree. Suppose if you want to rotate it along the Y axis, then again you have to input 45 and it rotates along the Y axis. You also have the shortcuts of rotating it by 90 degree completely wherein you have the clockwise option and the anti-clockwise option. So suppose if I select clockwise then it rotates along clockwise direction by 90 degree and if I select anti-clockwise then it rotates around 90 degree along anti-clockwise direction. After you have positioned your light correctly in your model to ensure that the location does not change while you are making other changes in your model, you can select the light and in the position tab you have an option which is the lock position option. So when you click the same, the position of this particular light is now locked and will not be changed even if you click and drag it. As you can see, it is not changing and there will be no options to make changes here as well. So if you want to make any changes further, you have to click on the unlock option and then you can move it again. When you are adding any light in your model, one of the properties of light that is important is whether you are allocating a spotlight or point light property to it. So when you select the light fixture and go into the customize option under the light option here you will see a change properties where light type is also a property that you can change. 
Here you have two options of point light and spot light. Point light means that a light source will emit light in all directions meaning it will cover all 360 degree and light will be thrown in every direction. However, spot light means that the light will be thrown over a particular spot which you can define by setting the angle, distance and penumbra right. So you have to specify on which angle the spotlight needs to fall by specifying the angle and direction here and the spotlight will fall accordingly. Spotlight can be used for any light that is inserted inside cabinets or if there is any focus lighting that you want over your decor whereas point light can be used for general lighting of the house, fall ceiling lighting, strip lighting etc. So in this particular render as you can see this particular ceiling light is marked as a point light and hence it's throwing light in all direction whereas the strip lights here are marked as spotlight so it's throwing light in a particular angle only. You can see that there is a particular angle in which the strip light is throwing light. This is how you can use both these lights to create renders as per your requirement. Let's understand how the intensity of light can be changed to suit your render. Select the light which you want to change the intensity for and in the design portal go into the customize tab. Herein you'll have op an option called lights which when you open the details of the light source comes up and in here there is an option called intensity wherein you can specify what is the percentage of intensity you want to provide for that particular light fixture ranging from 0 to 100. Depending on the size of the room and the amount of intensity of light that you want to be emitted from your light source, you can decide on the same and will also show you how the intensity changes when we change these values and show a comparison of the same. So herein you can change the intensity by moving the toggle forward or backward and the exact value will be mentioned here. You can also input the value here manually if you require and press on enter. Next, you can also change the color of the light such that your renders can come in the required type of lighting. So select the light and go into customize and under light you have an option of color. So here you can put it in any of the RGB values that you want. Typically the values that are required are white lighting or warm lighting. So you can specify whichever lighting you want to use. However, if you want to use any other light color like red, blue, etc., you can definitely do that as well. Showing you some sample renders for your understanding. So suppose if you have used yellow, then this is the sort of lighting that will come. Again, we have used only one light to show how the lighting comes. You can use multiple lights for your reference when you are doing the render. This is how it comes if you are using white light for your particular render. And if you are using any other color, like let's say red, then there will be a red lighting that will be shown. And if you are using pink or green. So you will have to control the intensities also here. This is only for reference purpose for you to understand how the color of the light impacts the render. To add lights inside your cabinet, Zoom into the cabinet that you want to add a light to and select the top panel or any other panel where you want to add a strip light or a cabinet light. Once you select the same, go into the panel tab here and in the same you will see an option which is strip light or light. You can add either a strip light by turning it on and selecting the required strip light or you can also add a cabinet light 
by toggling it on and you have options here for cabinet lights which you can select from. When you add the light, it is by default placed at the center of the panel and you can select the light and make any changes that you want to it. Similarly, if you add a strip light, then it will be added to the front of the panel like this and you can select the light and make any changes to this as well. Just like the top panel, you can select any of the other panels as well and add strip lights to the same. Suppose if you want to add a strip light to the bottom panel here, then you can select the panel, go into the panel tab and click on the toggle here and add a strip light. If you want to move the strip light to the back, then you can select the strip light and shift it front or side. Let's say I want to shift it to the back, so I will input a negative value of 200 in front and it will shift to the back. In this way, you can add strip lights under your cabinets as well. To select any material that you want to change the specifications for, go into the materials option in the left bottom of your screen under global setting and preferences where you will see the third tool which is materials. Open the same and in materials, you can see the picker option. Click on this and you can go and click on the material that you want to select. So as you can see the material editor modal opens up for that particular material and you can make the required changes in this. When you open the drop down next to materials you can see all the materials that have been used in your particular design and you can open the material edit modal by clicking on the change option next to any of them. Let's understand the difference between base color and base texture. So suppose if I am opening this laminate shade here, then you can see that it is marked as base texture here and the texture of it is shown here. This depends on the specification that has been mentioned in your admin portal. Suppose if you look at the same material in the admin portal in your catalog option. so. When we go into the SKU properties of the same under materials, you can see there is a base option. When you open the same, you will get the option to select whether you want it to take from the texture, in which case you will be uploading a digital file of the same or you take an option of color, in which case you will be specifying the color based on RGB values. So depending on whether you have taken a texture or a color in the SKU properties of that particular finish in your design portal, it will be shown as base texture or base color. So in this case, it was selected as texture and you will get the texture shown here. You can suppose if you have marked the same as a color and you have selected any color here, then the same material in your design portal will show as base color and you can make any changes in the color of the same in your design portal as well. However, you will not be able to change if it is a texture because it takes by default whatever is added in your admin portal. Finishes like laminates, veneer, membrane etc. where there is a particular texture that needs to be added we will go for base texture option and the same texture image, the digital image of that texture in high resolution needs to be added from the admin portal. And in case of finishes where you can specify the details via RGB values like wall paint colors, you can select a base color as the property of the material. This is a difference between using a base texture and a base color and the same needs to be specified in the SKU properties in your admin portal. So in this particular model, these two cabinets are marked as sky blue glossy and these are marked as sky blue matte. These are the two finishes. So now let's understand the difference between how the different uh, material properties of these work. So if we go into sky blue glossy, let's understand 
the property of specular first specular basically defines as to how much light a particular surface reflects so for glossy surfaces like high gloss laminates acrylics pu these will be slightly higher in specular value because the amount of light that a high gloss laminate reflects is high compared to high gloss laminate acrylics have a higher reflective surface so this will be even higher for acrylic surfaces and pu being the most reflective again this the specular value for that will be comparatively even higher so you can increase or decrease this depending on the physical sample of the material you are trying to select so if it's a glossy surface wherein the amount of light reflection is high you can go for a high specular here ranging from 0.5 and above and if it's a matte surface meaning the amount of reflection is low in that then you can reduce it below in a range of 0.1 to 0.2 so you can control the specular value here to control how much light a particular material reflects so for this sky blue glossy material i have put 0.9 and for the sky blue matte i will be putting 0.2 and let us see what is the difference that comes so this is the render that was generated and as you can see these particular materials have a more glossy finish and these have a matte finish this is how the difference in specular value affects the render and you can use it to customize your materials to look more glossy when you touch a glossy laminate versus when you touch a matte laminate you can feel the difference in texture a glossy laminate has a very smooth texture whereas a matte laminate has a slight roughness to it compared to these two textured laminates have even more roughness to them this is a material property that is controlled by the factor roughness so for glossy surfaces this roughness is going to be somewhere around 0.1 to 0.2 and the more the smoothness of the of the material texture like pu is a very smooth material so you can even reduce it below 0.1 and however in materials which are of matte finish this value slightly increases above 0.5 to 0.6 and in texture finishes you can range it even further above that at 0.7 to 0.8 other elements where you need to add more roughness are walls matte wallpaper finishes your fabrics in your sofas etc so as you can see in this example these particular finishes which are in glossy laminate have low roughness value and the matte ones have high roughness value next let's understand the effect of metalness metalness is the value which increases the metal like property of your particular finish so for example if you have stainless steel shutters or the profile finish of your aluminum frame shutters or chrome finished handles these are examples of materials which need to be added metalness into so in such finishes you can increase the value of the metalness and the same will start reflecting in your render for example let's check this particular render where as you can see these particular cabinets have have a higher value of metalness which is around 0.9 and these finishes are a 0.1 which looks like a matte finish so this is how we are showing the metalness over a large surface so that it can be clearly seen so you can control this particular value to add metalness to particular finishes in your model once you have made all the changes regarding the lighting and the material finish etc you can start generating your renders under the render tab you'll get the option of render and when you click on the same you will be asked to specify in which resolution you want the render to be generated we have three grades of resolution which is hd full hd and 4k and you also have the option of generating 360 degree renders for hd full hd and 4k 
the render credits that are absorbed from your organization for the render of each of this is different and we will explain the same as well in the upcoming video suppose if you want to generate an HD render then you can select HD and your render will be started and once the render is completed you will get another message saying that your render is now completed when you click on the render option in the fire render modal you will also see a pre-render preview which helps you understand what is the camera position and what is the view you will be getting in your render since this is a preview it helps you understand whether you are taking the correct angle and camera positioning for your rendering before you start the render you can also set the aspect ratio here by selecting if you want 1 is to 1, 16 is to 9 or 4 is to 3. Aspect ratio is basically the relationship between the width and height of your image. So suppose if I am taking 1 is to 1, then the width and height is equal. If I am taking 16 is to 9, that means the width is 16 and the height is 9. And 4 is to 3, similarly width is 4 and height is 3. This is considered as a ratio and you can select whichever one is appropriate for your render you can also adjust the camera position by clicking here and you'll be able to see where the camera is positioned and you can rotate the camera as required and the preview of the same will be shown here as well as you can see selecting the rotate option you can rotate the camera and keep seeing the free view here renders that have been taken for this project in the gallery option so when you click on the tool the render outputs modal opens up and you can see all the renders segregated as per the resolution they were fired in so you can see that in HD there are these renders which have been created under each render you have this three dots option which when you click you get the drop down to either download the image where a download has been triggered or you get an option to edit the image or simply view the image. We'll go into edit in a while. When you click on view, the render opens up and you can use this link to share it to your clients if required. You can also delete the render if you do not need it any further. Next to any render, you also get an edit image option, which when you click, you get the model for post-processing your image. So you can do various post-processing like changing the brightness, contrast, sharpness, color in terms of temperature and saturation. So if I want to brighten up this image, I can move the toggle option front or backward. So as you can see that the brightness for this image has increased and you can see the before and after options here. So if I'm changing the contrast, I'm increasing the contrast here, then it keeps increasing and I can decrease it as required. I can always increase the sharpness as well of that particular image and I can also change the temperature as required. Same goes for saturation. Once you have completed the post processing, you can download the same here. Or if you're not satisfied with the output and you would like to restart it again, then you can click on reset and it will go back to the before image and you can start all over again if you want to try something else. You have an option of taking screenshots as well of your design without rendering it. For that, go into render and you have an option called screenshot. Simply select this tool and a screenshot of your particular view in PNG format will be downloaded and you can use the same. To create lively renders along with adding your cabinets, countertops, skirting and polishing the finished details of the materials and lighting, you also should be working on adding props to your design so that the render feels complete. So as you can see in this particular render we have added props like hob, chimney, couple of countertop elements, some jars inside the cabinets, some greenery, etc. This creates an overall composition and the render comes out lively. 
So you can see the comparison in between the two renders. This is a render we had taken without any props and you can see how this looks very flat and does not have the same energy as if you look at this particular render where there are props added. Another thing to note while creating renders is that while you will of course be looking at the finished details of the materials that are used in the cabinets. You should also be looking at the material details of your flooring, your wall panels, your doors, any paneling that you'll be doing on the ceiling, your countertop, your tiling. All these also add to the overall look of your render. While these elements might not be relevant in terms of your overall output like pricing, elevations, cut list, etc. While creating renders, which is basically a visual representation of your design, such elements and details create a lot of difference in the overall output. While generating renders, you can control the environment around your model such that any openings that you have like windows will show the appropriate settings only. For this, you have an option under renders, settings, and herein you have environment map where we have lot of options of sky, night, cloud, city, tall trees where you can select what sort of a set setup you want to show outside your model and your render will be captured accordingly. So suppose if you take tall trees and fire a render then as you can see the view from the window has that particular environment type. Similarly, there are other options which you can try out and render your models. You can control the sunlight settings of your render as well. For this, go into view and you will see a sunlight option here. So when you open the sunlight settings, you will see the option of set day night time meaning that you can specify at which time of the day you want the render to be generated. This controls the light emitted from your external spaces. This controls the light that is emitted from your openings and the shadow creation that happens in your model. So you can set the hour anywhere between 6 to 18 and let's say I'm setting it at 6. So this has a setup of 6 a.m. in the morning and let's say I'm setting up for 10 o'clock then it goes brighter and if you're setting it for 30 then the shadow again changes and if you're setting it for 18 then the environment changes again the same will be reflected in your renders as well by default not is taken as by default, you can also change the default settings of which direction is east, west and south by specifying the comp by adding a compass to your flow plan. Go into flow plan and in Enote, you will have an option of compass. So when you add this compass to your flow plan, you can specify which direction you want to consider as east, west, south and north. So you can also rotate the same if required here such that in your render the exact sunlight direction is specified and as per that the renders are generated.